Hello everybody, I thought I'd do a video all about sort of silly things people say online about gas masks that I've read and filters and things like that and then try and uh, answer them a bit in this video. Now, um, one of the things I hear loads of times, um, and this is one that really annoys me, and this is why I've started off with the PH gas hood, is apparently all World War I masks were made by uh, urinating on the material for the mask and that's how they made filters. And I think there's some truth in the idea that some soldiers desperately uh, basically urinated all over their um, sort of handkerchiefs and things like that when they were gas attacks and they hadn't been issued masks. And sometimes if the urine was acidic it would neutralise chlorine which is an alkali. So there's maybe your only bit of truth to that. However most of that is completely false so that would have happened in a few incidents and it might have saved their lives but after the first couple of gas incidents on the western front um, all the western armies were very quick to actually develop gas um, gas masks you know respirators and everything like that um, like the ph sort of gas hood replica i have on at the moment how they made these was the masks made from a flannel material and then that flannel would be soaked in an acidic compound. It actually has a chemical name and it is not urine. And once they soaked it in that, it meant obviously if the mask came into contact with chlorine, the chlorine neutralized itself when it hit the acidic kind of material. But they used a proper actual chemical that neutralizes chlorine. You know, they didn't say, we need to develop a new mask, chap. So what we're going to do is just wee on this piece of uh, cloth and that's the mask for the soldiers, what? No, they actually, you know, properly develop masks. But there are still idiots I see in the comments quite often who constantly say, like, every World War One gas mask was a piss-soaked cloth. No, that is not true. Okay, so we know now to get that out of the way with that World War One gas masks did not have urine on as a filter medium. If that did happen, it was with the very early masks. Um, well, not even prior to masks, but you know, where people had pads uh, or handkerchiefs over their mouths in the hope that that would stop them inhaling the gas. And it might sometimes have worked. And that's as far as it goes. It is definitely not an industrial mask kind of producing factory where they weed on all the filters to actually get them going. Okay, the next thing that people say that happens to be wrong a lot of the time is that all masks are created equal or that all surplus masks are crap. And again, that's a gross generalisation. Here is a mask I don't like very much. All of the components are actually quite nice on this mask, it's just it uses cheek filters. It's a shame that the Czechs didn't make a uh, mask with all these same materials that was just a 40mm mask. I know you could say that the Czech CM4 is kind of that, but I don't think it's built quite as well as this thing is. But on the surplus market, you have a lot of masks that are just too old to be effective. You have a lot of masks that have become obsolete like these because nobody makes cheek filters anymore. I keep seeing comments of people like, you can buy new cheek filters. The cheek filters aren't new. They've been in storage for like 30 years. Um, you know, you can buy them still sealed, but that doesn't guarantee you they're going to work. And cheek filters, as I've said many times, are just a pain to, uh, you know, replace and change. So... Cheek filters, um, yeah, they're completely obsolete. You're not going to actually have a functioning mask with cheek filters, really, unless you're lucky. But then you wouldn't want to bet your life on that. So, yeah, you've got all these issues where you've got masks on the surplus market. They're either too old and won't work. They're obsolete, as in you can't get new working filters for them. You know, some would be in bad condition. But on the same flip side of it, there are lots of surplus masks, as you obviously know from this channel, which work absolutely fine, especially if you can find new filters for them. You know, a mask is a very simple thing. Most of the time it covers your face and eyes. You've, you know, got like glass or plastic eye lenses to look out of. And then you've got an intake and an outtake valve. The intake valve uses a filter to clean the air um, and trap anything dirty inside the filter. So, you know, there's all that sort of stuff. So... Yeah, the whole thing that either every surplus mask is crap or every surplus mask is fine is, you know, a gross generalisation. You know, the truth again is somewhere in the middle, which we'll get to with a lot of these things that, you know, the extreme ends of each argument are always stupid. Uh, there's lots of good surplus masks out there, as obviously you've seen my videos where I've talked about good surplus masks, but, you know, there's also stuff like this on the surplus market, which, yeah, it'd be good against tear gas, there's no doubt about that, but... 
you know, there's lots of masks that are just simply no good on the surplus market or too old and lots of masks, again, that are absolutely fine. So don't make generalisations like that. Now, this is another weird one I hear and it's all masks or all military masks aren't made to be 100% effective. They are only like 90% effective plus. And I don't know where this has come from. I've heard a few people say it, but, you know, it's complete, just not true. Basically, how, um, I've said about this before in other videos, but how a mask works is it creates, if you're using a normal filter gas mask, respirator, is it creates an airtight seal of your face through negative pressure, and the filter unit works via negative pressure. You inhale, the dirty air comes into the filter, it leaves the filter as cleaner. There's a bit of resistance there. Obviously, if there's a gap somewhere in the mask around your face, how a gas mask works with negative pressure means when you inhale, the air follows the path of least resistance, it comes through the gap in the mask, not the filter, and it's contaminated and you're inhaling poisonous gas or whatever. So, you know, um, a mask either works or it doesn't work. They're not made to be like 90% effective. They don't say like, oh, this mask will filter 90% of... Um, the gas, but 10% is going to seep around the side. That's not how it works. Now, why, where there might be some truth to that is in certain militaries, your expectation is if there's a chemical weapon attack, you complete the mission. And then if you die in the process, then, you know, that's it, that. Um, so I can kind of see how some people are saying maybe they're not completely effective for that reason, but that's not the mask being effective, that's, um, or ineffective. That's the orders for the troops being, you know, squandered um, for an objective. So, you know, if the mask breaks down because it's exposed to gas for too long or all your filters run out, that's the fault of whoever's commanding you for not evacuating you. All masks at the design level are made to evacuate somebody from a poison area, or at least so they can survive, you know, a brief poison incident. Um, you know, they don't design masks to be used non-stop because bits will break down under, you know, horrible chemical sort of attacks and things like that. But, yeah, so I don't, there's no truth in the thing that masks are made to, like, some masks are made to only filter 93% of the gas and the 7% will get through the filter. The filter will either block all the gas or none of it because filters work against different things. Which brings me on to the point I hear a lot that annoys me when, this is the one I hear, it's definitely, it's a very anti-prepper thing, I think, this, where people are telling you not to buy a gas mask, they'll post this. And they'll say, you know, won't know what the chemical agent will be that you're facing. So you're not gonna have you're not gonna have a chance to buy every type of filter, and you're not gonna have a chance to check what the gas is, so you um there's no point in you buying a gas mask or a filter. And you know, the main thing is that for years and years they've had things called combination filters, which is like what the ABEC filters are, what CBRN filters are where they put different things in the filter to filter different types of vapour, frets and everything like that. And the idea being that yes, you don't know what you're going to come across, so this filter will stop pretty much everything a filter can physically stop, um, but it's not going to last as long as a specialist filter. So, you know, that's basically all there is to that, that all you do is you get a combination filter and you get out of there as soon as the gas hits, the filter will stop the gas for a while. And if you really were taking, you know, this really seriously and wanted to invest a lot of money, you'd buy a self-contained breathing apparatus or, you know, like an air-supplied respirator. You'd have your oxygen tank, you'd have your positive pressure seal, and then you're absolutely fine no, no matter what the gas is, as long as none of your skin is exposed, because, you know, you're getting oxygen from a tank, you're not breathing the outside air and having to filter it. So again, that's a stupid argument, because... You know, there are combination filters for a reason. They are designed so if you don't know what you're coming up against, the filter will stop everything. You know, if you live next to a chlorine factory and you're worried about the chlorine escaping, if there was some sort of industrial accident, then you could just buy very big industrial filters that block chlorine. And then you know that maybe you've got 20 plus hours of protection from chlorine with just this one filter. But, you know, for most people, you get a combination filter and that does you fine. But again, there's like a, I think it's a very anti-prepping kind of thing where they say, oh no, you don't know what the gas is, so there's no use buying a gas mask because there's all these different types of filters. You wouldn't understand it. Again, that's all false. Completely false. And this is going to be my final point for this one. Uh, I'm sure I'll think of other things I can do other videos on and a similar thing. 
but I've come, you know, mentioned this a load of times, but it's about filters. And again, there's two extremes. There's that filters never expire and filters last forever if they're sealed. And the other end, which is, you know, filters, as soon as the expiry date ends, the filter's useless. The truth's somewhere in between. Filters have an indefinite shelf life, but they generally have an expiry date. So what that means is once the filter's expired, it will last longer than the expiry date, but nobody really knows how long that's going to be and do you want to trust your life on it. So it depends what you want the filter for. You know, is again, how long are you going to um, trust that filter, keep it stored? The better the filter stored, so for example, where the Avon filters and some of the other brands of filter are often wrapped in foil and then the filter itself is plugged as well as being wrapped in foil, they're going to generally last quite a long time after the expiry date because, you know, the filter is so well preserved. If you think about going, you're going to buy some food, right? This is a good way of sort of explaining it. And the food's got loads of sort of plastic wraps and foil wraps around it. If you open that outside of the expiry date or best before date, the food is probably going to be still alright. You know, it will eventually go stale, just because everything does, but if it's wrapped better it will last longer. And filter expiry dates also last on a lot of things like how they impregnated the filter, how the filter was made in the factory, you know, and lots and lots of other variables. So if you want a filter that's guaranteed to protect you, you buy one that's in date and you make sure it's sealed properly. Um, if you want it just for like, you know, um, irritant kind of stuff where it's not a threat to you but it's only designed to, you know, stop irritants, then yeah, uh, you can use an out of date filter. As long as it's not too out of date, it should still work. Um, but yeah, it's an indefinite date. So again, both extremes are wrong. Filters don't go wrong as soon as it meets the expiry date, and filters don't last forever. You're only guaranteed they're going to work up to the expiry date, uh, expiry date as long as they're sealed properly, but they're not going to go wrong overnight. They're going to work for a bit longer than that. Again, if filters are made from the factory to have a 20-year uh, shelf life, um, you know, and they're sealed, they're not going to go wrong after 20 years. They might last a good five years after that, but who knows, and would you really want to risk your life on that? You know, that's the issue. So hopefully that's covered a lot of the points people incorrectly make over and over again about gas masks and filters and respirators and what have you. Um, I'm sure, you know, because I always get funny things in the comments after a while, I'll see more and more stuff that's false, but I'll do more videos as and when I hear a lot of points. But, you know, this is just one of those things that annoys me because often I have to keep replying to the same kind of argument over and over and over again people make where they don't really have any evidence to back up what they're saying, but they're just going to say this because I heard it somewhere, it must be true, you must be wrong. So there you go. That's some misconceptions people have about gas masks.